When people say God isn't for prosperity, they don't know God. He created it this way. You have to fight against it to not prosper. I was thinking about this this week. I think about these kind of things all the time, but this week I was thinking, imagine if you were an alien or you met an alien, an alien came from some other world. Can you grasp this? Some other world, he knew nothing about, you know, the, the, this earth or how things work. It's just completely foreign to him. He didn't know anything. You know, he saw you breathing air and went, hmm, that's strange, right? So an alien, completely foreign, yeah. And then you say, oh, hold out your hand. Assume he had a hand, okay? <laughs> the alien had a hand. He holds out his hand, and you take a seed, a seed, let's say an apple seed. I was going to bring one, I forgot. Uh, an apple seed, and you put it in his hand, and you said, if you take this seed and you bury it in the ground, it will produce a hundred more seeds. Or in the case of an apple seed, it'll produce thousands and thousands over and over, year after year. And it, this alien would be like, what kind of place is this where I can take a simple thing like this that looks like a dead substance and just put it in the ground on this planet? Think of this. You're on a planet that God created for prosperity. You could just drop that seed on the ground and it would produce. Mm -hmm. Say, I'm on, I'm on a planet that God created, God created. that I could just drop. A seed. a seed and it would produce, it would produce a, hundredfold. a hundredfold and people say God isn't for prosperity they don't know God he created it this way Amen. you have to fight against it to not prosper isn't that awesome yes. that God created a place where you could just take a seed and drop it on the ground just bury it and wait a while <laughs> and it would come up and produce a hundred more exactly like it how awesome is that yes. that's the earth you're on that's the God we're with on the, say that's the God, that's the God. I'm, with I'm with on this earth, on this earth. now having said that did you find Galatians would that make you excited about sowing seed yes. it should Galatians 6 let's look at verse 6 let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teaches in all good things that kind of shows you where you should give that would be good ground mm -hmm. right yes. verse 7 be not deceived God is not mocked for whatsoever a man sows that shall he also reap is this true yes, yes. yeah verse 8 for he that sows to the flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption but he that sows to the spirit Say, sows to, sows to the Spirit. Shall of the Spirit reap. What is he going to reap? Everlasting life. And we know that that is the substance and force of heaven. Heaven runs on that. Isn't that great? Mm -hmm. That's what you're going to reap. Where does it say you're going to reap from? The Spirit. Now, I'm not, I'm not yelling at you at all here. I'm just going to tell you what God was saying to me. Is that okay? Yes. I'm preaching it for me as well as for anybody else. Now, listen you spend a certain percentage let's say 90 percent i really don't know the percentage here i'm just going to use that as a well that seems like most of your time right you spend 90 percent or most of your time in your mind is that true yeah. yeah pretty much we walk around with our mind right we spend most of our time in our mind or in our flesh our mind would be thinking things and our flesh would be feeling things does this make sense yes. so we're spending a majority a vast majority of our time there mm -hmm. yet all of my blessings come from the Spirit are you here mm -hmm. so we're spending 90% of our time in the mind in the mental realm trying to figure things out you ever try to do that how's it gonna come to pass figuring it out or in the flesh <laughs> worrying about whether it will work out mm -hmm. Yet all of my blessings come from the Spirit, and the Spirit's inside of you. You understand? Mm -hmm. You know that the blessings all come from the Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And yet you spend most of your time where the blessings aren't coming from. Why? What's up with that? Mm -hmm. Are you here? Yeah. All right, I'm not yelling at you, I'm yelling at me. 
and I spend a lot of time you understand that right I probably spend more time than most where does the power come from the spirit right yeah. from your mind the mind of the power of the mind or the power of your arms no it power comes from the spirit what about the power to get wealth where would that come from then the power to get wealth comes from the spirit mm -hmm. all of his blessings come from the spirit of the spirit you sow to the spirit time worship the word and of the spirit you reap everlasting life whatever that part of everlasting life you need if it's financial if it's healing whatever it is you got to reap it from the spirit of the spirit reap are you getting this yes. we know God gives power to get wealth does he not mm -hmm. yes. where does it come from spirit. comes from the spirit would you know it if it came we hope so but most people are so caught up in their mind or in their body they're not they're not sowing to the spirit they're not aware of it it might just pass them by are you here yes. he gives it the Bible says he gives power to get wealth well he's giving it say he's giving it, he's giving it. but do I know it if it comes he gives it where does he give it if I'm God well I'm not God but if let's say God and he's gonna give you power to get wealth he know we know he does it he's gonna give it to you where does he give it in your bank account in your job in your business where no he gives it to you in your spirit and would you know it if it came where do you know it where do you know when it came he gives it it goes to the spirit where do you know whether you've got it or not in your spirit, in your spirit man this isn't a trick question I guess it's probably <laughs> trying to trick you here no it's that's where he gives it that's where you know the Bible says we perceive we know we discern by our spirit man when God gave us something is this any good it's a spiritual substance it happens in the spirit you speak from your spirit it's happening now say it's happening now, it's happening now. Acts chapter 4 verse 31 and when they had prayed the place was shaken where they were assembled and they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began and they spake the Word of God with boldness what did they do when they were filled with the Holy Ghost spoke the Word of God see they spoke with tongues at the beginning these are the same people and then when the Holy Ghost came on in this time they spoke the Word of God it could have been in tongues too mm -hmm. because when you're speaking in tongues you're speaking the Word of God right yeah. Yeah. but either way you can be you can be moved on by the Holy Ghost to speak the Word of God verse 32 Acts chapter 4 verse 32 and the multitude of them that believed were of one heart and one soul neither said any of them that aught of the things which he possessed was his own but they had all things common verse 33 and with great power gave the apostles witness of the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and what great grace was upon them all say great grace, great grace. so something was on them is that can, does your Bible say that what was that great grace was on them all remember that verse 34 neither was there any among them that lacked now do you remember me preaching on the power of no lack this great grace brought to them no lack mm -hmm. can you see this neither was there any among them that lacked and we know from last week and the week before that's a power of the world to come mm -hmm. came by speaking the Word of God by the Holy Ghost and came by great 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 grace say great, great. that's that's different than regular grace mm -hmm. that's superior grace mm -hmm. neither was there any among them that lacked for as many as were possessors of are you still here yeah. maybe you wanted to go home for as many as were possessors say possessors, possessors. of lands mm -hmm. right or houses sold them and brought the prices of the things that were sold so he said great grace was on them and as many as were possessors of lands say lands, lands. is that more than one land yeah houses 
is that more than one house yes because yes. I used to read this and go oh oh so people that had houses sold them and brought the price where would that person be then then that person would be the one in need of a place to stay what are they gonna do? give him his house back it made no sense but here we see obviously that these people had more than one house say more than one house they had more than one land right and then they were able to sell that does it take grace to sell can you imagine here we have all these people there had to be many of them there were thousands of people there and it said all that were possessors were able to sell their land mm -hmm. is there great grace to sell land what about to sell houses mm -hmm. are you here yeah. say great grace, great grace. Comes, on me comes on me to sell, sell. lands, lands. And, houses. and houses now let me ask you a question could they sell a land and a house that they didn't have it said they were possessors of them so the grace had to be there for them to have it first it had to be God's will for them to have more than one house and more than one land in order to have it say to have it to possess it and then sell it are you here this grace had to include owning more than one land or one house mm -hmm. say that on your lips owning, owning. More, more than one land, than one land. Or, one or one house so they must have owned them first for this scripture to be relevant mm -hmm. and it must have been God's will for them to have it if it was his will and grace for them to sell it mm -hmm. are you here if you believe that is way more than most people believe and they laid down the 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 increase of that at the Apostles feet verse 35 and distribution was made to every man according as he had need and Joseph by who by the Apostles was surnamed Barnabas which is being interpreted the son of consolation a Levite and of the country of Cyprus having land what must he have done first he must have had land and sold it so he had to have it and sell it he had to get it and sell it is there grace for getting is there grace for having is there grace for selling is it supernatural is it part of what we are called to be in are you here is this any good the Bible calls it great grace having land and sold it and brought the money and laid it at the Apostles feet God's great grace try that on for size a God's, God's great, grace. great grace does it include those things most most people would say no but we know differently because the Word of God says so are you here so 2nd Corinthians second Corinthians chapter 9 verse 7 every man according as he purposes in his heart so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity for God what loves a cheerful giver now if somebody's gonna give something he has to have it thank you in order to give it you have to have it and God loves a cheerful giver can you connect these two if God loves for you to be a cheerful giver he has to love for you and provide something for you to have mm -hmm. in order to give yes. and if he really loves it when you love something what do you do you get more of it God loves a cheerful giver so he loves to give you things in order for you to give them because you can't give them unless you have them let's read verse on let's read verse 8 you still here and God is able to make all grace now that would include the great grace yeah. you understand oh. say God, God makes, makes all, all grace, grace abound toward me toward see God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having is that in your Bible 
I hope you see it now is there a having in your Bible mm -hmm. in order for you to always have something to give you must first have it right. and the grace includes the having of it mm -hmm. as well as the giving of it I hope you're excited about this God is gonna bring things to you bring things across your path that you may have them and enjoy them he's a God that brings things for all things for you to enjoy and then he will be happy when you're able to give it and guess what happens when you give it it's given unto you good measure pressed down shaken together running over so God is able to make all grace abound toward you that you always having all sufficiency in all things say all things, all things. may abound to every good work Your God.